if you look back 100 years, uh, human wildlife conflict was something that was not even spoken about. There was enough space for humans as well as for wildlife, so they never came into contact. People are more and more omnipresent on this planet. Atualmente há um crescimento rápido da população. We're cutting down the forest everywhere. Humans and wildlife are coming into contact more and more regularly. The poachers who are massacring the elephants um, force the elephants to flee. Elephants are becoming refugees. When the elephants are refugees in the forest, in their home, where can they move to? Human beings and wildlife are sharing the same, same resource and the same habitat. And when they come into contact, conflict can occur. La nuit, maman avec la torche, l'éléphant devant. Moi derrière avec la torche. Avec le feu. Tout, 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 tout. Quand il part au bord de la plantation, vous, tu penses là qu'il est parti. Or il est là. So, new human wildlife conflict is, 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 is happening. It was obvious that we needed to find a solution. It's one thing fighting cross-border poachers who are coming in to poach in Gabon, but if you're fighting with the villagers that live around the parks, you, you, you're, you're, on a, you're going to lose. And there is a lot. There is a lot of positive value of wildlife, economic value, you got all the ecotourism. A big male elephant that tourists can come and see over its, its lifespan will generate more money and more um, you know, benefit for, for, for people and for the nation. But if, if the wildlife at the same time destroys the rural villages, then that, that just isn't viable. We, we're, going to, we're going to lose you know, the, 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 the support of the communities. There is no aucune technique qui arrêtera. Le conflit homme-femme. C'est une somme, c'est une somme de techniques euh, qu'on peut avoir ici et là, qu'on va adapter et alors euh, impliquer de plus en plus nos communautés. The way it started is like we ask individual countries in Africa and Asia, would you like to be part of this program? What you get out of this is an exchange, and a knowledge exchange platform, and where you can share your experiences with, within each other. And this uh, exchange would accelerate your learning so that your actions on the ground can, can be more effective. We built um, what the ladies in the village now call la barriere, the fence. And at first they didn't believe us. No, avec cette idée on n'avait pas cru. La vérité à mon Mon 
plante, mon sable. On ne voit rien, il n'y a pas de solution. And then suddenly the fence was finished and they started hearing elephants, you know, trumpeting and screaming when they touched the electric fence and they, they started to see all the elephant trails that used to come straight into their plantation going all around the fence and they started to think this might work. Si ce n'était pas la barrière, il devait déjà rentrer de tout. Automatiquement, tout ça là, il y en a. On n'avait pas coûté que on va voir ça. On va voir ça. Là. The only hope for a long-term solution is global mobilization. We need to be creative. You know, we need to find creative solution and support each other. It's like a new inspiration to make you go and, and then start the work. Talvez temos que consciencializar as pessoas que cada espécie na natureza tem a sua importância. We consider ourselves to be the most evolved species, so we should be planning our actions much better than what we are doing. You can't eliminate the human wildlife conflict, you can only manage it. Se ele não mange pas, ele não sofre. Ele é bête, e depois ele é sage. Como se ele mesmo que planta, como se ele mesmo que trabalha. Ah, mes enfants.